Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Petro here once again, and uh, I am at Historic Masonic Lodge in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, this Masonic Lodge is the oldest Masonic Lodge uh, in Tennessee, and at one point in time, this was the tallest building in all of Tennessee. Um, the first three-story building made here, and uh, pretty interesting this uh, this lodge because this is uh, where Seventh President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act. So pretty much um, what happened uh, in 1830, right here in this building, uh, you had Andrew Jackson pretty much kick every Native American Indian out of this side of the Mississippi to the other side of the Mississippi. So the Chickasaw, the Cherokee, Choctaw, all those were kicked out. Um, actual, the head members of the Chickasaw Nation met here with Jackson on that day in, in 1830 and, and signed and they sold their land and they all agreed to bounce. And uh, it's pretty crazy that this is right here and it's still going. Uh, uh, you just picture Andrew Jackson, you know, uh, uh, walking through these doors and uh, uh, that's how old this Masonic Lodge is right here. And um, you can see this old gate right here. Uh, this is where the entrance, you would have walked right through and uh, into the lodge right here. That's interesting. Okay, I don't know what that one is right there. But that's pretty, uh, pretty wild. Uh, pretty wild. Okay, the wife and I, we're gonna go get back back here. And, uh, here's the side door. Somebody's tagged it. Yeah. Jackson, Masonic Lodge, what? Okay, we're gonna get up on top of it. Okay. Uh, interesting you can do this. <laughs> and here we are. Now, Andrew Jackson, he had an extreme, like, hatred toward the Native Americans and, um, uh, what he did to the, to the Creek Indians was, uh, was pretty crazy. You know, he, he, uh, pretty much slaughtered all of them, uh, men, women, and children, and, uh, always had a thing, uh, to get rid of the Native Americans, but you have, really have to understand, uh, it was mostly, uh, uh, motivated by money, uh, behind Andrew Jackson. You got to realize after the war of 1812, Andrew Jackson was a huge hero, uh, uh, um, and he was, he was, he was a hero, but what it did was it opened up, uh, the lands of Alabama and Mississippi for, um, for him to buy. And he bought it at a, a bunch of land for very cheap and then ended up selling it to big plantation guys for a lot of money. And he got very rich off of it. And, uh, that was, uh, Andrew Jackson's whole thing was, was, was making money and uh, uh, removing the Indians from, from this side of the Mississippi to the other side of the Mississippi was, was really for him all about money because then he was able to take that prime, that prime land that the Native Americans had in Georgia, in Florida, uh, um, up in Ohio, all that land that they had, bam, now it was free for the taking and uh, the U.S. government was able to sell it. Now, uh, uh, the government had been, the U.S. government
government had been in debt after the Revolutionary War to these other countries that helped us out. And the only way that, that, our, that America was able to pay any of the money back to these countries was by selling plots of land throughout America. And in the beginning, you know, with George Washington, when he first started it, you know, it was a, a dollar an acre. And uh, um, by the time Andrew Jackson was selling those plots of land in Mississippi and Alabama, it had gone up to $78 an acre. So uh, the normal man couldn't just go out and buy and buy land anymore. Uh, uh, only rich people could buy that. And uh, uh, the one that majorly profited off of it was Andrew Jackson. And uh, right here is where it happened, where he signed that Indian Removal Act. It was right here in this lodge, probably in that, in that building right here. And uh, pretty wild that I'm able to just come up here and walk around this uh, here in Franklin. Uh, pretty interesting. So, Donna, what, uh, what do you have to say? Well, I don't like the feeling of this place. And when I came back here, if you, there's, it's, it's very pretty, like it's a mossy floor, but this building that we're standing on top of is all brick. There's no windows. There's a few ventilations. Interesting. I mean, it's, it's whatever. It's an old building. It just feels easy. Feels easy? Yeah, that's yeah, how you feel? I'm scared. Like, I was scared back there. I just got a true feeling, and I, that's why I kept running back to you. It's really beautiful building. Uh, tons of crazy history. Um, you can see where it's been repaired up there, but crazy history here, uh, Andrew Jackson. And, uh, the reason, the reason why it happened here at this lodge in, in Franklin, Tennessee is because, uh, Andrew Jackson, when he was president, his secretary of war, John Eaton lived right next door. There's a Catholic church there now, uh, uh, but at that time in 1830, the Secretary of War for the United States of America under Andrew Jackson lived right next door. So um, when they wanted to get this treaty done and signed, uh, they had agreed with the Chickasaw and the Cherokee and the Choctaw to all meet here in this lodge to sign the, the Indian Removal Act. Uh, but only the Chickasaw Indians uh, uh, chief showed up here. And um, they did sell their land at a very cheap price and the Trail of Tears happened. And uh, you don't know about the Trail of Tears, um, all the Native Americans on the east side of the Mississippi were removed to, the, to all the uh, reservations in Oklahoma, New Mexico, and all that type of stuff um, in 1830, 1831, and about 28,000 of them died on the way. There was about four or five different routes they took uh, uh, from all the way in Florida, uh, uh, the Virginias, all that. Um, it's all signed right here. And uh, it's amazing I'm standing where I'm standing. around to the very back side back here and uh man this is just a uh, pretty wild wild crazy history right it's here creepy. yeah it's creepy <laughs> look back here it doesn't feel good at all no you feel creeped out this space right here this, this space right here donate says she feels creeped out you gotta walk down there no. Okay, now as I'm walking around uh, uh, the right side of the Masonic Lodge, uh, during that time, the only uh, uh, congressman that opposed the Indian Removal Act was Davy Crockett, who was uh, elected to Congress 
uh, at the time when Andrew Jackson was, uh, was elected president. Now, Andrew Jackson and Davy Crockett, they didn't really like each other. Uh, Davy Crockett served under Andrew Jackson uh, when they were fighting the Creek Indians. And after they slaughtered men, women, and children, Davy Crockett didn't agree with it at all. And um, he was the only one opposed to uh, India Removal Act. And um, when they voted for it, he actually gave, gave a great speech and uh, got, got other people to, uh, to oppose it too, but it still passed. And uh, the India Removal Act still happened and, and Trail of Tears and all that. But the only one that was against it was Davy Crockett. And uh, Davy Crockett was uh, a great Tennessean, a great American too. And, uh, you know, he, he fought with Andrew Jackson. Uh, um, Andrew Jackson forced him to fight and made him fight and uh, uh, like drew guns on him. Uh, uh, David Crockett was gonna bounce after they killed all the Creek Indians like that. David Crockett was like, I'm out. And uh, um, Andrew Jackson had his people pull guns on him and said, no, no, you're gonna come fight. And then David Crockett ended up going and fighting with them in the War of 1812 too. And, uh, uh, and, and David Crockett was, uh, uh, he, wasn't, he, did, he didn't get re-election back into Congress uh, his next term. And he fled the United States and went to Texas. Back then, Texas was still Mexico. And then uh, um, David Crockett, you know, was pretty much what happened with uh, uh, Texas fighting its revolution and leaving, uh, uh, leaving Mexico and get it, gaining its independence was because of what happened to David Crockett at the Alamo. And uh, remember the Alamo, but I always kind of thought that, you know, uh, maybe Andrew Jackson had a little bit to do with that uh, uh, because the way that the way that that worked and uh, uh, the way all the rebellions worked uh, to gain Texas, to gain California, is uh, uh, they started a, uh, um, you know, they, they started a rebellion amongst the people. So that way America didn't actually have to go to war. It was the rebellion of, of the Texans going rebelling against Mexico. Uh, um, that's how they did it. And uh, man, Sonic Lodge, Franklin, Tennessee, Andrew Jackson history, Native American history, right here. Here's where it all happened in this old, tall ass building that I was just climbing on the back of. It all happened right here. Check it out. Number seven. I thought number seven's interesting too, because Andrew Jackson was number seven president of the United States of America. And here we have at the Hero Masonic Lodge, number seven. This building right here, Franklin, Tennessee. I'm uh, sitting back here on the on the bench here at the number seven Masonic Lodge here in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, we just I've just told you all about the history of Andrew Jackson, the um, into your removal at. Uh, that happened in 1830. So let's jump forward uh, about 30 some odd years to the Civil War. Because um, in the Civil War, uh, this Masonic Lodge was actually used as a, uh, as a hospital for both Union and Confederate soldiers. But uh, um, before that, when, when, the, when the Civil War was just starting, you had the Carton Plantation, which I've made the videos about, which is about a few miles uh, as a crow flies this way, uh, you had Miss McGavick, uh, who lived there at the Carton Plantation. She was up here sewing Confederate uniforms for the Confederate soldiers. So this Masonic Lodge uh, during the Civil War was first used as a place to make Confederate uniforms. Uh, right in there, uh, uh, you had Miss McGavick from the Carton Plantation uh, making Confederate uh uniforms, Confederate soldier uniforms in there. And uh, pretty interesting to happen at the Masonic Lodge. And uh, as I'm sitting here, I'll bring y'all to a little uh, uh, Petro history. My grandfather uh, was a Freemason and uh, I took care of him the last, you know, seven, eight years of his life as he had dementia and Alzheimer's. And I could never get any Freemason information out of him. He always said that he joined the Freemasons and they were a fine organization. That's all he would say. Uh, but um, he, when I took over the finances and, and the old house that I grew up in with him, because I grew up, my grandparents raised me, 
I found my grandfather's old uh, uh, Masonic stuff, his apron, uh, plates, and this ashtray right here. Um, this ashtray is a family heirloom, and uh, I found this uh, um, uh, with my grandfather's Masonic stuff, and uh, I have all that stuff still to this day. Uh, I'm not a Freemason, and I never want to be a Freemason, but I do have that in my family heritage. And sitting here at this historic Masonic Lodge, uh, this Masonic Lodge is historic for uh, what happened to the Native Americans in America and Andrew Jackson and uh, his beef that he always had with them. But as it turned out, it was just about money, really. It was really about money in the end uh, because he made a ton of money off of it. Uh, but here's this, and uh, I'll give you all a little little look at it. Uh, but I'm Petro, and that was the Masonic Lodge here in Franklin, Tennessee, number seven. Um, tons of history. And as you can see, you can come check this out and walk around and walk up top, walk on the roof. Uh, it's all right here. that and uh this was an old mill shop and there's the the big mill across the street the cotton gin and um andrew jackson used this office right here uh, uh when he was in town he would come over this is a bookstore now uh the most incredible bookstore here in franklin but andrew jackson uh used this used this office right here um when he was in town uh, pretty amazing history mm -hmm. 